Hello, you're watching the news bulletin of New from Hanoi, and now the headlines as usual. Vietnam hopes for increasingly substantive ties with EU. IMF optimistic about Vietnam's economic growth. Preserving the features of the traditional Mid-Autumn Festival. On September the 8th, President Nguyen Xuân Phúc hosted reception for the newly accredited ambassadors of the UK, Norway, Denmark and the Czech Republic who came to present credentials. Meeting British Ambassador Ian Furrier, President Fook said education is an area where the two countries can cooperate effectively in the coming time. He asked the UK to create more favorable conditions for Vietnamese students to study in the European country. The diplomat proposed a number of cooperation areas between the two countries in the coming time, including cooperations in social economic development. Receiving Norwegian's ambassador, Hinder Sundbakern, the president suggested during her tenure, the ambassador would encourage Norwegian's firms to invest in Vietnam, especially in the fields of clean and renewable energy and sustainable marine economy. The ambassador expressed her impressions of the effectiveness of COVID-19 prevention and control in Vietnam. She said she wished to see the Vietnamese economies recover and grow, thereby further promoting cooperation between the two countries. Meeting with Danish Ambassador Nikolai Perai, President Fuchs said he was pleased to see that trade turnover between the two countries still reached nearly $600 million US million last year, up 18% year-on-year despite COVID-19. He added that he hoped by the end of the ambassador's term this number will increase three times. The ambassador said that Vietnam's social economic development is impressive and this is a potential for Danish businesses to cooperate with Vietnam in the coming time. Meeting Chas Ambassador Hinex Munisek, the president has said that economic and trade cooperations between Vietnam and the Czech Republic has enjoyed growth. With a Czech automobiles enterprise having established a joint venture in automobiles production in Quang Ninh province. The ambassador said that the Czech car company Skoda has established a car joint venture in Vietnam and he wants to promote the project to make a Czech car brand available in Vietnam soon. National Assembly Chairman Nguyen Hue welcomed a delegation from the European Parliament's Committee on International Trade on September the 8th. Welcoming the delegation led by Chairman Bern Lang, the host leader said despite the serious impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic and disrupted regional and global supply chains, economic and trade ties between Vietnam and the EU are growing well thanks to the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement. We thank the European Parliament's Committees on International Trade, the European Parliament and Mr. Lang for their considerable contributions to the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement negotiations, ratification and implementation. Meanwhile, Chairman Lang noted the Free Trade Agreement provides a solid foundation for new strides in Vietnam-EU relations and that statistics recorded in the two years since the agreement's implementation show its positive economic effects, especially boosting post-pandemic growth. A delegation of the Vietnamese Ministry of National Defense, led by the Deputy Minister Huang Xuân Tien, attended the 11th Seoul Defense Dialogue in the Republic of Korea on September the 7th. The Seoul Defense Dialogues from September 6 9 brought together defense officers and experts from 54 countries worldwide and representatives from regional and international organizations. The Vietnamese delegation participated in the dialogue and sessions on cooperation in promoting non-denuclearization on the Korean Peninsula and rebuilding trust in the region. On the sidelines of the dialogue, the Source Defense Dialogue Space Security Working Groups were launched to discuss global cooperation in promoting securities in the strategically crucial domain. The forum's cyber working group saw the participation of defense officers and experts from 43 countries and representatives from regional and international organizations. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs held a regular press conference on September the 8th. Vietnam believes that the openings of a Vietnamese language studies faculties in Cambodia's Royal University of Phnom Penh will be beneficial to bolster the traditional ties between the two neighbors. 
Some have questions the necessity and impact of the faculties. However, when asked to comment on the controversies surrounding news of the faculty, deputy spokespersons for the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Đoàn Khắc Việt, told reporters that Vietnam and Cambodia have a long-lasting friendship. He said the governments of Vietnam and Cambodia wish to strengthen the extensive cooperation in various areas, including education and training. The event will contribute to the strengthening of cooperation in education, trade and investment, and increase mutual understanding and people-to-people -people exchanges between the two countries. The first half of this year saw a swift economic rebound as Vietnam's pandemic restrictions ease following the adoption of living with COVID-19 strategy and robust vaccination drive, according to the International Monetary Fund. Supportive policies and the government's program for social economic recovery and development have been accompanied by strong manufacturing output and a recovery in retail and tourism activity, IMF said in a recent article posted on its website. IMF has recently raised Vietnam growth forecast to 7% this year, lifting its by a full percentage point from the three months earlier as the only significant upward revision among major Asian economies. The fund lowered the projection for next year by 0.5 percentage points to 6.7 percent, but that's in contrast with dimming prospects in the West and would be the fastest pace among Asia's major economies. Tackling the challenges relating to labor, social safety net coverage, and climate related risks will further unleash Vietnam to its considerable growth potential and continue advancing on a sustainable development path toward higher income status, the article noted. Vietnamese rice has been introduced at Kia for Collagen, a hypermarket operated by French multinational retail and wholesale corporation Kia for as part of a program run by Vietnam Trade Office in France. The September 6 debut marked the first appearance of the branded Cơm Vietnam in Carrefour's distribution train, which covers more than 250 hypermarkets and about 3,000 supermarkets and convenience stores around France. Lokte Group was the first to export Vietnamese rice to Europe within the framework of the EU-Vietnam Free Trade Agreement. France is only the first touch point here in Europe. The next will be certainly Germany, Italy and the entire European Union. And we have first-class quality, Yasmin quality, and it's by far the best rice you can find in the world. In terms of the taste, in terms of the smell, but also in terms of the production. So. We're producing very sustainable and extraordinary sustainable rice in the world. Cơm Vietnam is produced by Lokte Group, a leading provider of agricultural services and products in Vietnam. The group plans to export 107 containers of the product next year. The product was put on the shelves of a hypermarket in France for the first time on September 2nd, under the Vietnam's trade office Vietnamese Mid Autumn Week. It took nearly two years for Vietnamese rice products to become officially available in France. Vietnam is among the 66 military medical delegations gathering in the Belgian capital city of Brussels for the 44th International Committee of Military Medicine World Congress held from September 5th to 9th. The event marks the International Committee of Military Medicine's 100th anniversary, the celebrations of which were postponed last year because of COVID-19. This event provides Vietnam with an opportunity to share its experience in the field, according to Colonel Nguyen Van Zang, Deputy Director of the Department of Military Medicine, who led the Vietnamese delegation. The participants focused discussions on the global pressing issues such as fighting epidemics, particularly COVID-19, future trends in surgery, battlefield emergency care, and infection control, among others. One of the presentations sparking interest at this year's event came from Benjamin's Queen Austrian Military Hospital. It introduced the phage therapy, which uses bacterial phages to treat bacterial infections. It's expected to be an alternative to antibiotics when bacteria develop resistance. Founded in Brussels in 1921, the committee now has 190 military medical units from different countries and territories worldwide. 
Ultimate City is planning to set up a 26,000 hectare economic zone to the south, which is expected to house industrial parks, urban areas, and many associated services. The zone has been included in a rough project on the development of industrial parks and export processing zones for 2025 to 2030, with a vision to 2040. Accordingly, the zone will cover the entire District 7 and Yabe District, along with parts of Bincheng and Ganze. Its core area will be turned to an export processing zone covering 300 hectares and here for port open area on 1354 hectares. According to the Ho Chi Minh City Export Processing and Industrial Zones Authority, many investors want to rent several dozen hectares of land for factory building, but the city could not provide them. Therefore, when there is a large enough economic zone with adequate infrastructure, the city will be able to attract large investors. Zumquat Refinery will undertake the fifth maintenance that will last for 50 days from June 22, 2023, according to Bingsun Refining and Petrochemical Joy Stock Company. The company said that during this maintenance, it will focus on strengthening risk management and optimizing the bidding package distribution plans. It will strive to shorten the maintenance period to about 43, 45 days. The last overall maintenance of Dungquat Refinery took place in June 2021. Dungquat Refinery, which is located in the Dungquat Economic Zone, Bingsun District of Central Quang Province, has a refining capacity of 148,000 barrels per day, 6.5 million tons crude oil annually, and can process 67 tons of crude oil from various parts of the world. The traditional Mid-Autumn Festival 2022 opened along the Mura Street of Phung Hung in Hanoi on September 7th, with interesting activities to be held. Lasting until the official Mid-Autumn Festival on September 10th, the event is being organized by the management board of Hoang Kim Lake and the Hanoi Old Quarter. The mural streets is crowded and exciting, with children of all ages and hundreds of lanterns and toy stores. The toys all have a similar design based on Miss Autumn, while the old shapes of the toys create the atmosphere of a traditional Miss Autumn festival in the modern world. For artisans like Miss Nguyen Thi Tuyen, who spent nearly all of their lives maintaining their craft, it seems an even happier time as traditional toys have their place. I am so happy folk toys have found a place and are loved by many people, especially children. We have to work hard to meet demand. To spread a love of national heritage among children, this year the management boards of Hoang Kim Lake and Hanoi's Old Quarter invited 10 artisans to attend the event and make folk tours along the mural streets. I feel quite happy despite the wet weather. I make star lamps. After my grandmother introduced me to meet autumn festival items that our family create. We held the event in the hope of spreading a love for traditional culture children. The traditional Miss Autumn Festival 2022 also aims to develop a community's cultural space to meet the needs of local people and tourists. The Northern Port City Haiphong has deputed the Haiphong City Tour digital map, an online tourism platform, and a tourism promotion campaign on TikTok. Haiphong City Tour is based on a Google map and features a modern and professional design, hoping to provide convenient and effective support for visitors. Tourists can access the digital map at haiphongcitytour.vn to source information about and roads to their desired restaurants, chain locations and hotels. The map also shows visitors review of local places. Meanwhile, the online tourism platform can be accessed via the website zulik-gov.vn or the Traveloka app. Citra aims to attract 1,000 videos and 150 million views to inspire people's interest in local tourism. On this occasion, the department launched its official TikTok channel, Haiphong Tourism Official, which is also a step to step up tourism promotion on digital platforms. <laughs>